Okay. <coughs> this is a dog fennel demonstration plot. I wanted to talk about it for a couple of reasons. How much yield loss can you expect from dog fennel in a pasture? Besides a lot. Half. <laughs> yeah. That's a pretty good number, especially when you have a density of about 50%. That's almost a one to one, okay? When you get into situations like back here, which is almost 75% cover or greater, that's when you can start significantly impacting yields by May. You can see an 80% yield loss by May in our dry season, okay? That's pretty amazing. Think about it, the grass isn't growing that much at that point. But when you don't have any dog fennel, you compare it to an area that looks like that, it really starts affecting your Bahia grass growth early on. So that trend pretty much carries on throughout the whole growing season. Okay? And when you have pastures that have 25% or less dog fennel, that Bahia grass does tend to catch up in that low density of dog fennel by the end of the season. But it takes it a little bit to get there. All right? So that's that's one reason. So when do we want to spray dog fennel? Yellow. Early. When it's low, when it's short, early. All right? What's the problem with spraying dog fennel when it's early? Dry. 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 You could get more dog fennels later. You get more dog fennels later? Sometimes. That's right. But the main thing is it's dry. All right? So we talk about, our recommendations talk about spraying dog fennel when they're 12 to 24 inches, 24 to 36 inches, and above 36 inches, okay? 12 inches or less, you can use some products like 2,4-D and Weed Master and be pretty effective, even when it's dry. You get up between that 12 to 24 inch range, start spraying some 2,4-D and Weed Master, what happens? Nothing. Sure it does. Those plants curl. They're going to die, all right? You come back, you spray, you come back a week later, they're all curled over. They're going to die, aren't they? More often than not, if it's dry and those plants are hardened off, they tend to curl right back up and start growing again. And by the end of the season, it doesn't even look like you spray them at all unless you start digging around and looking at the plants. They still have the injury, but they grew right out of it. So, what I've seen in our really dry seasons is if you go with stronger products like Pasture Guard or something like that, you can overcome that, but you're also going to pay for it, right? Pasture Guard is my Cadillac herbicide for dog fennel control. It is my favorite, but it is also the most expensive. Three pints. I realize that. Three pints. Three pints for the old formulation, a pint and a half for the new. Another thing I didn't talk about is the formulations of Grey's Annex and Pasture Guard have changed in the past year. Grey's Annex is now Grey's Annex HL, and Pasture Guard is now Pasture Guard HL. HL stands for high load. They increase the amount of chemical per gallon. Okay, so they de actually decrease the application rates a little bit. All right, so when you get above 36 inches, dog fennel, now we're into some some stronger products, some higher dollar products, <clears throat> but they all work uh, fairly similarly. Far down on your right, the first two white flags, and these plots were sprayed straight through. Okay. I'm gonna go stand in the middle of it. <clears throat> This should have been Grayson X HL with 20 ounces of clean wave. Okay? All the way down is pretty brown. There are a few plants that were missed. But do you expect 100% control each time you spray? I don't. I like to see it. But it doesn't typically happen. Okay? The next one was. Graze the next HL, pint and a half with a half pint of Pasture Guard HL. Okay? 
okay? Hmm. Hmm. Clean waste treatment is the one that goes out quite hmm. a bit. This is my favorite hmm. treatment just hmm. because it's hmm. the first one I ever tried to pick up that hmm. taller dog pedal. Hmm. And the speed of kill is so much faster. Hmm. It seems hmm. like the clean waves so animals can get back in there and graze a little hmm. bit quicker. But again, hmm. you see there is some green. Hmm. It is missing some. Hmm. This next one is not something you're probably going to see recommended all that often, but I wanted to see what it was going to do. I might tweak with this in the next couple of years to see how this is going to pan out. But this is Grazing X HL at a pint and a half with two ounces of product of MAT. I had to search for the green a little bit harder, so I think we can tweak this and use some lower rates, possibly, and uh, end up helping each herbicide helping each other. The uh, MAT helped the milestone mm. component on the dog funnel control. The milestone component <coughs> helped the MAT on the soda apple control and up, end up with a very good uh, tank mixture mm. for a very broad spectrum weed control. So stay tuned on that. I think it's something that could be fun to watch. Mm. This one should be in four at 12 ounces. And again, this is the MAT with Remedy, hmm. and it looks pretty good. Hmm. <laughs> pretty much browned out everything at this hmm. point. Now, it's going to be interesting to see if we get any regrowth from the root hmm. stock. I don't think we will. I, I think we'll end up okay. Hmm. This last one hmm. is called is the Rejuvra two and a half. Hmm. Say two and a half yeah, ounces. Yeah. Okay, two and a half ounces. You can see some, there's some green in the center. The plants were a little bit too tall for my boom, so they get full coverage. All right. So this even looks good. I'm going to tell you this. This is the best rejuver plot I've seen to date. My favorite dog fennel treatment with the MAT products has been in Bora, time in and time out. Rejuver just hasn't gotten there. It sure did this time. So I'm not saying it can't happen, but I, I think this is just a little bit more.